Official bilingualism, what is it costing us? If you saw today's Sun Media newspapers, you would have seen a giant map explaining how much we are paying. It is an extremely high amount, according to the Fraser Institute, 23 million in British Columbia, 33 million in Alberta, 9.6 million in Saskatchewan, 16 million Manitoba, boom, $623 million in good old Ontario. The next door in Quebec, only 50 million. New Brunswick, 85. PEI, 5.1. Nova Scotia, 18. Newfoundland and Labrador, $3.4 million per year. Most of this money, by the way, comes from the federal government. It's not the office of the Commissioner of Official Languages. They actually send out an awful lot of cash to the provinces to get them to spend. In addition to what you just saw there, about $1.5 billion. Is this the right way to go? Should we be reconsidering official bilingualism? Beth Trudeau is with Canadians for Language Fairness, joins us now in Ottawa. Beth, your group is advocating an end to official bilingualism or just a redrawing of how it's applied? We are against forced bilingualism. Forced bilingualism does not work. If you don't use it, you lose it. The French themselves say that the reason we have to all become and learn French is because they're going to lose it because they're surrounded by English. But if you live in a community where 96% of you are English, when are you going to use it? Forced bilingualism does not work. We're against forced bilingual sign bylaws. We're against uh, forced bilingualism. And all those billions of, billions of dollars wasted on bilingualism could be much better spent put into health care and our debt. Look at the ridiculous debt we have in Ontario. Before I get to this study that was just sent to me today, uh, this afternoon, on this issue and how much it's cost, just so people are clear, you, your group, uh, I believe, is supporting Jean, uh, the Brisson family out of Enbrun, which is yeah. just outside of Ottawa. Yeah. He's your neighbour. He's my neighbour. He has a French-only business sign, and the township has told him he's got to put up a, a bilingual sign, and he said, get lost. If you don't know what I'm selling, don't and, bother. And they were such hypocrites when they came out with that, because... Le Poste de Pompier in Embrun does not even have the sign saying fire station. An English person could be having a heart attack in front of it. It does not look like your normal fire station, and they wouldn't know that help is just inside. And the municipality still, even after our sign bylaw debate and everything. So they forced all the businesses to do it, but, yeah, but yeah. not themselves. Not all, it's only the new businesses. If you are going to put up a freestanding sign, you now have to get a, a permit to put up that sign. And in order to get that permit... You have to give, show so, them your sign. So you, you agree that francophones can be unilingual as well. You're, you're, you're for fairness on both sides. Absolutely. $1.2 trillion is the figure that we spent on official bilingualism, uh, according to Jim Allen, retired uh, accountant. And that's based on uh, federal, provincial, and private sector costs from 1969 to 2008. We haven't had a big increase in the number of people who are, who are bilingual, though, have we? No, we haven't, because if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, I live in a town, Embram, Russell Township, is 50-50 split between English and French. The town of Russell is about 90% English. The town of Embram is 50-50. Marionville is mainly French, and a little bit of Limoges is, is mainly French as well. Um, we use it. You go into any store, you're going to meet a lot of English and French people in the stores. So if you're born and raised and work in our township, you okay. will well, more than likely be able to In this bilingual. area, eastern yeah. Ontario, Ottawa yeah. Valley... French is a factor. English is dominant, but French is a factor. You can't get rid of it. Move out west, though. The Move out west. Right. 2%. Right. 2% French speaking in all of British it? Columbia. And James Moore says, well, we've got to have uh, Radio Canada or there will be no French radio in downtown Vancouver. Do we need to be spending on that? Or do we need to be spending on English in Chicoutimi, in northern Quebec. And via rail, you can't even be unilingual English to work on the train ride between Winnipeg and British Columbia. Everyone has to be bilingual to work via rail. Canada Post, they can't even sort mail by themselves at 5 o'clock in the morning unless they're bilingual now. Out in Russell, the post office in Russell, Mrs. Barr, got fired because she can't sort mail by herself because she's not bilingual. But postal codes are... Unilingual, are they not? Isn't that part of the reason for having postal codes? You walk into the town of Navin. I grew up there. It's, it's an English, historically English town. You're now greeted in the Canada Post in French first. And I, I even so, scolded them for that, and I said, you're an historically a, English town. Do you ever see most Canadians getting bothered enough to, to push back on the this? The youth today, Brian, you would be amazed. The first guinea pigs, what I call them, that have, have went through French immersion and are now 24, 25, 26 years of age. My youngest daughter is one of them. They have so much resentment 
um, being forced to take French immersion, which took away their studies from what they really wanted to study. Um, they graduate, my youngest daughter graduated from Carleton University Criminology, high honors. Two years later, she's still working retail in Ottawa because she can't find a job because she's not bilingual enough to pass the Not test. bilingual enough. Enough. And what is enough? All right, Beth Trudeau with Canadians for Language Fairness. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Send us your thoughts on this. What, what do you feel about official bilingualism? We won't get rid of bilingualism completely in Canada, but is it applied? Is it over-applied? Byline. That's on media.ca.